Hey everybody, this is Salar and in this lecture, we are going to install and configure JetBrains Rider for C Sharp. Here are some points we will cover. We will first download and install JetBrains Rider. Once the installation is completed, we will create a console application and write our first Hello World program in C Sharp. After that, we will discuss a little about C Sharp application with and without top level statements. And finally, we will learn to put more than one projects in a single solution. These were the points we will be covering in this lecture. So let's move on. Download and install JetBrains. We first need to open the JetBrains website. The URL very simple, jetbrains.com. Once the web page is fully loaded, we will scroll down a bit and here we will see different flavors of JetBrains coding environment. JetBrains, like I said, is a coding environment which is also called IDE, Integrated Development Environment. As you can see here, JetBrains have different flavors. We have a JetBrains environment for Python, JavaScript, C, C++ and here we have for .NET. In order to run the C-Sharp, we need .NET environment and that flavor is called JetBrains Rider. So click on this option and here we have the direct uh, URL of jetbrains.com slash rider. So you can also put this URL in your browser to open this download page. The JetBrains Rider is free for non-commercial use such as students and learners can download and use this environment. So let's move on and click on the download option. Writer is available for all the systems like Windows, Mac and Linux. I am on the Windows system so I will download the setup for it. Now click on the download option. The downloading is in progress as you can see the size of the file is big 1.4 GB. So I'm going to pause the video and once the download is completed I will come back to you. The setup file is completely downloaded now. Let's click on it and run the setup. Now we have some options to choose. For example, if you want to create a desktop icon, so you can check this checkbox. And here we have the association area. Here you can associate JetBrain riders with the Visual Studio. So we are not going to check anything here because we won't be working with the Visual Studio. And one final option here is add bin folder to the path. And here I will make a check. Bin folder contains the binaries and just by adding it to the system path, you can run your binaries from anywhere, from any other directory or from the command line tool. Now we're done with the selection. Let's click on the next button. In the next window, you will see the suggested name which will appear in the start menu of your computer. So the name of the folder is JetBrains. We don't need to make any change here. And now click on the install option. The installation takes time, just wait 5 or 10 minutes. When the installation is completed, I will get back to you. The installation is completed now and the setup is asking for a reboot, but I will manually reboot my system later on. So I will choose the second option. And then click the finish button to simply close this setup wizard. Now move to the desktop and here we will find the JetBrains Rider shortcut. Just double click on it and run the application. Agree to the user agreement, click continue. And if you want to share your data with the developers, so you can choose the option send anonymous statistics. Otherwise, you can choose the option don't send. I am going to choose don't send. And now we simply need to log in in our program like any other applications. I will choose free non-commercial use application. And here you can see what does non-commercial use mean. You can use it for learning, self-education, content creation, etc. Now I click on the login for non-commercial use button. As you click on the login button, it will take you to the browser window where you have different options to log in into the application. I will simply use my GitHub account to log in into the application, but there are some other options as well. So I will click on the continue with GitHub and uh, my user ID and password. Sign in and authorize JetBrains. And now I'm being redirected. I think I already had an ID with this email and that's why they are trying to send me the reset code. But anyway, I will insert the code. Now you can see the login process is successful. I can close this page and return back to the JetBrains. 
It seems I'm logged in. Just agree the agreement and click on this button. Start non-commercial use. Next, we have tell us about your experience window. You can do whatever you want here. You want to send feedback, send it, or you can simply cancel it. So after the experience window, here come the final window, which is used to create projects and solution. We are going to create a console project. And for that, we will select the new solution option like this, and it will open for the a new window. Now, this window is important. And here we have the project types. A console is listed here. We are going to create a console application. If I click on the desktop, so here we have a desktop projects such as VPF and Windows Forms application. Now, click back on the console. And here we need to fill some information. The solution name, we need to choose a solution name. Solution name will be the project folder name. Let's say the solution name is C Sharp code like this and now the project name is hello world and the last thing we need to fill here is solution directory that means where we want to save this project on our computer so you see a uh, folder icons i will click on the folder icon to open the browse window then i will go to the c drive and here i will create a new folder like this and i will select this folder to save my project inside it now you can see the path is updated. Our project will be saved in this directory, which is inside the C drive, which is also easy to find. Now, another very important thing here to consider is targeted framework. The recent .NET version at the time I am recording this lecture is 9. So this version seems to be very old, 4.5. And if I click on this drop down menu, so here we have options to select. And if I select the latest version, and I would also recommend, whenever you work with the C Sharp, you will always try to install the recent and the newest .NET version. So I will choose the .NET version, reset version 9, and that version I need to install. So SDK version 9 is not installed by default, so I will install this version. Just click on here, it will take some time. We just need to wait. Now the .NET recent version is installed. We now know that we are working with a recent version. The language type is obviously C sharp. And down there, I will select this option. Do not use top level statements. We will discuss more about it and learn the difference between a console app with top level and without top level statements. So right now I'm going to check this box. I don't want to use the top level statements in this application. And finally, we will simply press this create button it will create a brand new c sharp console application just wait a couple of minutes a couple of seconds as you can see our program is loading and here is our solution explorer our project is loading here you can see here and very soon you will see a program.css file sorry program.cs file where we put our code so now we have our project fully created and loaded. And here you see the program.cs file, which is also opened here. And in this file, which usually code. Now, before we learn to execute this program and check the output, I just want to go inside this project folder in my C drive. If you remember what we did earlier, C sharp code is the name of the solution and solution name becomes folder on the drive. And inside that folder, we have a project and the name of the project is Hello World. So let's go inside the folder on the drive. Now here you see we are inside the C Sharp Practice folder, which we created a while ago. And inside that folder, we have our solution folder, C Sharp Code, that you also see here. And inside that folder, we have our project named Hello World. And if we go further down inside this hello world folder, so we will find our program file. Here we have our program.cs file that you also see here. Let's now move on and see what do we have in program.cs file. Program.cs file is the entry point of this application because it has a main method. The main method is also called an entry point because the operating system starts communicating with the C sharp code through this main method. 
This main method should be inside a program class. This is a default class. And here we have a namespace, which is a container that C Sharp uses to group the classes. So right now we have hello world namespace and inside that namespace we have only one class, program. This is the minimum default template that we need to run or execute C Sharp program. We code inside the main method and you can see by default we have a statement console right line with the text hello world. That means if we run this program, this right line method gonna print this string in the console. Console is a text-based command window where the output is printed. Now, in order to run this application, we have this green arrow sign here. And as I click on this green arrow, our project will be executed and you will see the output in the console window. So let me just click it. And so you see our project is executed and here is the output in the console window. So this is our cancel window and if you want so you can hide this just by clicking on this uh, dash sign and if you want to open it again so you need to uh, click this play run button now you can see you have your uh, cancel window back hide it again like this another window that comes by default here is the monitoring window when you run your application it simply shows the performance of your application like the usage of the CPU and the memory. We don't need this window, so there must be some option to hide it. Here we have a hide option and uh, if you click here, so you don't have close option here, so we can simply hide this window. So we successfully installed JetBrains Writer. We learned to create console application and now we know how to execute the application. Now the next point we are going to cover here to open multiple projects in a single solution. Now you see our solution name is C Sharp Code and we already know C Sharp Code is just a folder on our high drive. And inside that folder we have a project named Hello World. Now I want to put another project in the same solutions. As a student we work with the multiple projects so we can put multiple projects in a single solution folder. So in order to add another project, I will simply right click on the solution folder name. Then I will click add and then I will select new project. It will take me back to the new project window like this. And this time the project name is, let's say, I want to practice with the variables. So the name of the project is variables and it will automatically be placed in the C sharp code folder which is inside the C sharp practice folder. The framework we don't need to change here. We are working with the recent and the latest framework. The language we are working is a C sharp. Now at this time I will uncheck this box. Now I don't want to use the top level statements. So I will uncheck this box and you will see another console template is created. So simply click on the create option and now we just need to wait some seconds and you see the variables uh, project is being created and uh, it is fully created. Now you can see we have two different programs files, program.css file, uh, sorry program.cs file. Here we have a program.cs file and here we have a program.cs file and uh, they don't look similar. The first program.cs file, which is belong to the hello world project using top level statements and uh, sorry, statements. And the other program.cs file, which is belong to the variables project, is without top level statements. The console application without top level statements is basically a new console template. It is actually designed for students and beginners so that they start coding directly in this file without uh, taking these lines uh, into the consideration. The namespace that you see here, the program class, the main method, these are considered as top level statements. And if you don't have these statements in your application, your application is called no top level statements, just like, yeah. 
So when we have no top level statements application, we can start writing the code directly anywhere in this file, just like we do in Python or in JavaScript. So here we have uh, a console write line, uh, the default line here, the code line here, we can put some more line. Let's, let's say I create a number variable here and I will place a uh, number 10 into the variable. And now I will simply write the value in the cancel. So working with the C Sharp console application with no top level statements is quite simple. Just put your code in the file and execute your file. Now, as we have two different projects here in the same solution. So at the time of the execution, we need to make a selection about which one to run. So once we have more than one project in our solution directory, the program will offer a pull down menu here where we can select the project we want to execute. Now this time I want to execute the variables project. So I will select it and now I will press this run command. And now you see the output in the console, hello world. And here is a value of our variable, right? And if you want to read more about this new console template, which is no top level statement. So here is a link placed by the applications. You can simply visit this link and read more about this template. Now we'll talk about all the important windows that you need in front of you as you write your C sharp code. The first important window here is the solution window. And here you see your projects, the files of your projects. You can even add and remove other resources using this window. The next window is obviously the output window. And here is its icon, a play sign. Just click on it and you will have your output window in front of you. In addition, there is another window where you will spend most of your time as beginner. And that window is called error window. To open the error window, we have a shortcut here, this warning sign and the title of the window is problem. So just click on it. And now you will see the error window. Programming errors, bugs, and warnings are displayed or placed in this error window. Now, let's suppose I just remove the semicolon from the statement here. Semicolon is a part of the syntax and it's necessary. As I remove the semicolon, the error is placed immediately in the error window and it also says the line number where the semicolon is missing. So whenever something is wrong with your code or your code file, you will consult with this error window. Now let's put the semicolon back. To the top left corner, we have all the menus, file, edit, view, code, etc. And if you accidentally close any window, you can reopen it. You can get it back on the menu option. You will select the view menu alternative and at the top, you will find tool windows. And here we have all the windows such as solution explorer. Here we have output window, run window. Here we have our uh, error window and other important windows. Now, the last thing that I want to show you before we wind up this lecture is about adding extra resources such as class file or interface file. In order to add a class file, we will simply right click on the project name. Let's say I want to add a class file to our variables project. So I will right click on the project name. At the top, there is an add option. I will select the add option. And here we have alternative class or interface. So I will select this option and the name of the class. Let's say I want to add a car class and I will select the car option here, not interface, record, instruct, enum. I will select the car option and then press enter. And so you see that car class is added to our project. Working with the classes is an advanced topic, but you will eventually learn to work with the classes. You will learn the object-oriented programming later on. So as a beginner, you don't need to worry about the classes at this moment. I just wanted to show you how to put extra resources in the project. So my friends, that was all about JetBrains Rider configuration for the C Sharp. And you can simply start your C Sharp course. You now have a fully functional IDE for coding. I will see you around in some other tutorial. Thanks for watching.